All right, my calculus compadres, if you could get out your notes and examples that were sent to you for related rates, we're going to look at example number six. If you've had a chance to look at example six, it mentions that there is a house with a ladder leaning against it. It doesn't really matter where the house is, but let's just say for the sake of argument, maybe it's in Scotland, all right? So we have this house. I don't know how to talk like that. This is terrible. But anyway, we have a house and there is a 10 foot ladder leaning against it. All right, look at that beautiful house. I should have been an architect, huh? But anyway, here's this 10 foot ladder leaning against this house. Notice I'm sticking with the Scottish accent, aren't I? Um, but anyway, or I don't know, maybe the house is, is on a ranch. I don't know, Yeehaw! All right, so here we go. So we have this 10 foot ladder leaning against the house. Let's just say for the sake of argument that daddy's up here painting the house, all right, and that kind of thing. So, so here's the premise of this question. It says that the, be, that the bottom of the ladder begins to fall away from the house, begins to slide away from it. It even says that a person pulls the base of the ladder away. So let's say there's a child down here saying, daddy, mommy, come play with me. And they start to pull the bottom of the ladder away from the house. All right, so we've talked a lot about how we need to get the equation set up for this particular situation. And if you think about it, we will make the assumption that the ground and the house form a right angle. Although again, I would somewhat disagree with the premise of this question because that would be very poor for drainage. They really should have it sloping away. But for the purposes of simplicity, let's assume that it's exactly perfectly flat ground, terrible drainage, I get it. Um, but we have to make some assumptions. So think about this, as this ladder gets pulled away, the distance from the top of the ladder to the ground is gonna change in every instant. That's a variable, x. And the distance from the house to the base of the ladder is changing all the time, also. So that would be another variable, y. And as we've said many times, it doesn't matter what direction or which variable is which, just stay consistent with your labels. But if we apply the Pythagorean theorem because that's the triangle we're looking at, a right triangle, whereby the latter would be the hypotenuse, as you recall. Well then, this would set up as the equation x squared plus y squared equals 10 squared. Is that what you guys all got when you set that up? Yes, we did, Mr. Soybean. Thank you, I appreciate the feedback. So anyway, and it's interesting how you all have the same high-pitched voice. But this would be true at any given instant. And of course, if we go ahead, might as well square the 10. And this would be our equation that would be true at any given moment during this process. All right, so um, that would be our equation. Let's write down what rate they want us to determine. So again, this is our sixth example and I hope we're on to it now. So, the question is, do we want to know how fast y is changing or how fast x is changing? And in the question, if we go back and read it, and I will remind you, you have these uh, available to you. It says, how fast is the top of the ladder going down the wall? So as I've labeled it, that would be x. How fast is this going down the wall? So keep in mind, this is going down, this is going out. So don't we, the way I've labeled it, want to find dx dt, the change in x with respect to time. Sound good to everybody? Yeah, that's awesome, Mr. Sauerkraut. Thank you for the feedback once again. So anyway, then wouldn't we want to differentiate with respect to time as dictated by that? symbol. So here we go again. We're going to find the change with respect to time. Ow! Would somebody please remind me to quit hitting the board with that finger? It hurts. Yeah, I'll let you know. All right. So anyway, if we differentiate this with respect to time, and I would again put these phantom parentheses here to help us remember we're doing the chain rule on these particular things. So remember Aretha Fraction, chain, 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 chain rule. Sorry, Aretha. But anyway, so applying the chain rule to this, as we covered before spring break, 2x to the first power, and then we do what's inside with respect to time, so that would be dx dt, all right? 
And then the same thing here, power rule first, because that's outside the parentheses, and then dy dt. And then as we all know, but let me ask you just in case, does anybody remember what the derivative of a constant would be? Yeah, it would be zero. That's right, it would be zero. Thank you. And again, it's interesting to me how you all have the same voice. But that would be zero. All right, so there we go. And that would be the relationship between these two variables as in terms of the rates at which they are changing. What are we up to now? We're going to read the question, and we're going to substitute numbers and solve for the unknown. So this is where we come, become math detectives, right? And so we need to read the question, figure out what we're solving for. Oh, yes. We are looking for dx dt. So that would be this right here. Yes, I see that. All right, we're looking for dx dt. And so we're going to leave that variable here. I better put those down. Sorry, but I need to get to the math here. And now let's go back and read the question and see if we can find numbers to plug in for everything else. That's where the detective work comes into play. We're math detectives. So let's see what we have here. We already have the fact that the ladder is 10 feet long. All right, that's already in the picture here. It says that a person pulls the base of the ladder away at a rate of one and a half feet per second. So again, this person right here is pulling the bottom of the ladder away. So wouldn't that one and a half feet per second be how fast the Y is changing? So that would be dy dt feet per second, all right? And it said it was one and a half feet per second. That's how fast the child is able to pull away the ladder. Whenever we put a number in for a rate of change, recall we have to think about whether or not it's positive or negative. Well, Y is getting bigger. The distance from the base of the ladder to the house is increasing. So that would be a positive number. And again, the plus sign is unnecessary, but that's okay. We can put it in there. Let's not confuse that with addition. All right, let's keep reading. How fast is the top of the ladder going down the wall? That's the change in x with respect to time. And there's three parts to this question. So I think in the interest of time, we will only do one of them, all right? But in part A of this question, let's label the fact we're doing part A here. It says when the base of the ladder is six feet from the house, so as we watch this video of this thing happening, we would say, oh, at the instant when that is six. So that's a number we can plug in for y at that particular moment. All right, and then of course dx dt, as we've mentioned, is the variable that we wish to determine. So that remains variable. Of course, the two is still with us. Now the question becomes, what would x be, be equal to? And if we look back at our picture, we say, okay, this formula, this equation was true at any given moment during this process. But now we're looking at that specific instant when the value of y is 6. So can we come back here now and say, oh, well, let's figure out what x would equal at that instant. And again, applying the Pythagorean relationship, our good friend Pythagoras. I went to high school with him. I don't know if you know that. But anyway, he was pretty good at geometry. But anyway, we would say, okay, so here x squared plus 6 squared equals 10 squared. And we can solve that for x. So 6 squared is 36, 10 squared is 100. It's just algebra from here. Subtract over the 36. I'd love to show all the steps, but we're in calculus. We square root both sides. And x would equal technically plus or minus 8. But look, x represents a length. And so in this example, that would be just the positive 8. And so at the instant that y is 6, x is 8. When the base of the ladder is 6 feet from the house, the top of the ladder is eight feet from the ground. In other words, we have a value for x now. And this is like an algebra question at this point. We're solving for that particular variable. Let's go ahead and clean up some of the numbers. So two times eight is 16. That would be 16 dx dt. This is just algebra. The rest of it should be easy stuff. Two times six is 12. And 12 times one and a half is 18. Solve for, for dx dt. Treat this as a variable, it's just algebra, right? In fact, you know, this part of it is so easy that I would say even a cone head could do this, right? So 
Let's continue solving this particular thing. We have a climbing device leaning against our domicile, and we will now determine the rate of change for x. So anyway, continuing on, let's subtract over the 18. This is just algebra. At 16, dx dt would equal negative 18. Of course, since that's multiplication, we'll divide by 16. And dx dt would equal negative. Okay, we'll talk about that in a minute. Why did that turn out to be negative? And that's negative 1.125. And let's make sure to put the unit of measurement on this. Let's put the unit of measurement. It is very important, Valdar, to do this. Again, ask your parents or your grandparents what this is in reference to. Saturday Night Live, Coneheads. But anyway, x is feet. And time is mentioned throughout the question in terms of seconds. So the point is, at this moment, the person at the top of the ladder has the sensation of falling that many feet per second. Again, x is decreasing. As y increases, x decreases. And that's reflected by the negative that's in there. So again, my hope would be that I'm not too much of a hillbilly here. I'm in a room all by myself enjoying mass. Oh, hey, good to see you guys. Thanks for coming. Actually, we are practicing social distancing. That is not true. But anyway, that's my take on it as a mass hillbilly. I hope y'all enjoyed that. And we will be back in a little bit with more in our next section. That should be enough examples to help you be successful with your rate, related rates questions. So I wish you the best. I will send that homework to you, and we'll go from there. Take care, everyone.